Hey, welcome everybody to this week's Algebra 2 video. Um, so this video is going to be a little bit uh, longer than uh, previous ones, only because this lesson is uh, one of the longer lessons. Um, we have to go through quite a bit of material, and um, we have to go through four examples. So I'm only going to make it one lesson this week. That's just an extended one, so I'll give you a time about halfway through if you want uh, to take a break um, for this. Um, and really, it's just a matter of making sure that uh, you take the stuff step by step. Remember that we're doing this stuff basically without a calculator because we don't really have one. Um, however, we are allowed to use online calculators. And in a quote unquote real world situation, you'd have access to a calculator to help you through all this material. But we're doing it without a calculator, so it's going to be a little bit of an adventure. Um, so let me go ahead and read through this first part. I'm continuing to do what was suggested to me a while ago, which was, you know, write the notes down first and um, I will talk through them uh, nice and slow. Don't forget, you can always pause the video if you need time to write it down and uh, you can always email me or something if you need help with what I just said or something. So we're going to call this graphing rational functions part one. And yes, it is a super duper long lesson, but it's still only part one of this topic. It's just a very, very large topic. So graphing rational functions part one. Now my essential question is, how do I graph case two, which is when the numerator's degree equals the denominator's degree, or case three, when the numerator's degree is less than the denominator's degree, rational functions. Um, so the case two and case three, I'm talking about that previous lesson we did with the end behavior, because we're that's gonna come into play uh, when we're doing this. Um, the objective here is I can graph rational functions. Again, you have to write this down. This is what I would write on the board. Um, I can graph rational functions by first finding zeros, asymptotes, and I've underlined that because that's going to be uh, the previous page for us. Um, going to be a vocab word and a key point. So let's talk about this word asymptote. Um, that is spelled A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E-S. -E um, you can jokingly call it an asymptote. Um, turn over the previous page here. Let's check this out. So what is an asymptote? A line, and I put a star there because technically asymptotes do not need to be lines. They can also be curves um, or uh, other graphs like parabolas or cubic or something. It's just going to be a line for us the entire time that we're doing it. Um, which a function gets close to but never crosses. I put a little star in the word never because that is also misleading. It can actually cross it. Um, it just doesn't cross it for the functions we're doing, and we'll talk about that how it's going to work later. So the word line there, not 100% accurate. The word never, not 100% accurate, but it's just what we're going to write for now. Um, so a line which function gets close to, uh, but never crosses. So let's visualize what this is first. So in class, I would have had you graph this on your calculator. You don't have one. So I actually just graphed it out in advance for you. Um, if you want to draw these pictures, feel free. If you just want to do a sketch of it, you can. So we're going to consider this function f of x equals 1 over x minus 2 minus 3. If you were to graph this function on your calculator, it would have uh, it wouldn't show this dotted line. I drew that dotted line in there. We're going to draw that. That dotted line is a vertical asymptote. Um, so we are getting that, that graph is getting close to, and this guy is getting close to, but not crossing that line. And that's a vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote, that minus three there, again, is another one that the function is getting close to, but not touching. Again, close to, but not touching. Um, so for us, we're going to be mainly dealing with vertical and horizontal asymptotes today. Um, there are also diagonal asymptotes, and the correct word for that is oblique. Um, and again, like I said earlier, there's also parabolic and cubic and circular and all kinds of other junk um, types of asymptotes. I also wanted to consider another type of asymptote just to show you the word never is actually really, really wrong. Um, but just to try it out. So this is another one. We are not going to have to graph anything this complicated um, until you get to calculus. But consider the function sine of x over x. So sine is that function that you dealt with in geometry. We were going to deal with it a whole lot this year, but we kind of ran out of time due to the whole COVID thing. If I have time in the next two weeks, I'll touch on it, but probably not going to have that time. 
anyways, so if you were to graph it, it looks like it's going up and down and up and down and up and down. But as it get as the x value gets larger on the right hand side, it gets closer and closer and closer to that line at the bottom. It goes to y equals zero, that end behavior. So as you notice though, the asymptote, which is the x axis, the graph crosses and it crosses it over and over and over again, and it actually crosses it an infinite number of times but it gets really, really close to that line. That's what's important for an asymptote is that you get very, very close um, as X gets very large. Um, anyways, so that is what we're doing here um, are these asymptotes. We're gonna have to deal with these a whole bunch. We're gonna learn how to graph these ourselves today. That's kind of our goal. So let's go back to that previous page. Um, how do I do this? They're gonna be a five-step process. So let's try to get, I can't even get all five steps on there at one time. So I'll just do steps right here. We'll start with one, two, and three. Step one, this says find all the zeros. Remember your multiplicities from our previous lesson by setting the top equal to zero. If you want the right word for it instead of top, you could say numerator equal to zero. If that makes more sense to you. Um, that's what we do first. Step number two is we're gonna find all vertical asymptotes by setting the bottom equal to zero. I will talk about why this happens when we start graphing it, why this makes a lot of sense. Um, I'll, I'll show some Wolfram from Alpha stuff, but to make a long story short, if you set the denominator equal to zero, um, you're going to get the vertical asymptote. If you notice, I put a little star on the word steps and the number two here. The reason why is, is uh, when we do part two, graphing rational functions part two, um, there's going to be a step before this one that affects number two as well. So. I, it's just too much stuff to do in one lesson, so I'm trying to make it nice and easy. But technically, that let, that step changes later. So find all the vertical asymptotes by setting the bottom equal to zero. Find number three. Find the horizontal asymptote by finding end behavior. So step three is basically that previous lesson. We just have to repeat that previous lesson for every single question. I know it's annoying, but that's what you got to do. Number four says find any coordinate that is not a zero. Recom that says recommend whole number if possible. So basically um, what I need you to do is to find any coordinate whatsoever. I usually like plugging in like one or two, but I try to make it end up being a whole number instead of a fraction. But you need one coordinate to start your graph and then the rest of it you're going to graph using logic. So there we go. Those are all the steps that we're going to have to follow. We're going to do it one by one. Let's go ahead and begin our very first example here. So our very first example is this guy. I recommend pausing and writing down the example first just so you have it. And then we're going to take this whole thing step by step. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time, but we're just going to, we're going to do it. So step number one, we have to do the top equal to zero. So number step one is the top equals zero. This is finding the zeros of our graph. So um, here we go. We got to do 2x cubed minus 16x squared plus 32x equals zero. Now, in a lot of questions and all the rest of the questions for today, it's going to be factored for you, but you do have to actually factor these if you had a college class that covers this material. Um, so I want to make sure that you at least remember the factoring that we did all the way back in October. Um, so we see that all these numbers are even and there's an X in all three of them. So we need to go ahead and factor out an X and a two. So if we do that, we're going to have X squared minus eight X, not four minus eight X plus 16 equals zero. Continuing to factor, if we do this, we have 2x, and what multiplies to positive 16 and adds up to negative 8 ends up being negative 4 and x negative 4 again. And rewriting this more fancy, we have x multiplied by x minus 4 quantity squared equals 0. So we have two zeros. We have 2x equals 0, which gives you x equals 0, and this has a multiplicity of 1. And then we have x equals 4, uh, or x minus 4 equals 0, and therefore x equals 4, and this one has a multiplicity of 2. All right, so we have that down so far. So these are our two zeros that we're going to need for later. Uh, again, these give us our x-intercepts, uh, just like that other lesson that we did. So we're going to go ahead and say that we have the coordinate 0, 0 now and 4, 0 as our coordinates. 
Step number two. Step number two we wrote down said find the vertical asymptotes. Um, it also told you to remember the multiplicities because we are setting the denominator equal to zero in this step. So we're setting that bottom equal to zero. So now we got, uh, in this case, x minus 5 equals 0, because we're just doing this guy right here. Boom. So if we have x minus 5 equals 0, oh my gosh, that is a bad 0. We have x equals 5, and this one has a multiplicity of 2 because of that exponent. And then we got x plus 2 equals 0, and then we have x equals negative 2, and this one's got a multiplicity of 1. And these are vertical asymptotes, so these are actually already written correctly. So we have our vertical asymptotes, we have our zeros. Um, we're going to condense all this information uh, on the next page when we actually graph it all. Step number three, we have our end behavior. So we have to figure out our uh, end behavior. Um, so for end behavior, what we're going to do is, uh, as a reminder, is a leading term over a leading term. So the leading term at the top, that one was nice and easy, was already set up for us. We have 2x cubed um, on the top and over leading term. And the leading term in the bottom ends up being uh, x squared times x, or just x cubed. Because those two guys are equal to each other, the end behavior is going to be the fraction of each other, the 2x cubed over the x cubed, or in other words, it's going to be uh, 2. Or we would say as x approaches infinity, uh, um, actually it's plus or minus infinity, um, f of x in this case approaches 2. What that means is this guy over here, every single time, whatever this is over here, so long as there is an end behavior line, this is our horizontal asymptote. So that's going to be y equals 2 is our horizontal asymptote. Last but not least, you have to find any coordinate whatsoever. Um, that coordinate, um, you want it to be a whole number, uh, if at all possible. So um, I've designed this question where if you plug in four, you get a whole number, or I think you do. Um, I sure hope you do. Um, I don't know if I actually did it right, because um, I might not have. So we have to plug in a value. So plug in, oh no, four, you get zero. Of course you get a whole number. I can't use that then. What a disaster. I'll have to plug in whatever I'm gonna plug in instead. I will plug in, maybe one would be nice. Yeah, plugging in one will be nice. So plug in anything, any coordinates. Any coordinate whatsoever, I'm gonna make x equal to one. And if I make a, a x equal to one, I get f of x equals, in this part you probably just wanna do in a calculator for sure, or at least you know a four function calculator where you you know can figure out the numbers nice and easy, but I'm literally plugging in one for x. It's not that big a deal. So minus 16 times one plus 32 times one over um, one minus five squared times one plus two. And I am going to be doing this on a calculator. I know you do not have one, um, but uh, please use your use your phone as a calculator. Use Wolfram Alpha, like I was recommending before, um, to help you get this done. Because um, you end up getting 18 on the top, and then um, you get 48 on the bottom. which is approximately 0.375. And you want the decimal so you can actually graph it in some way. So we have the coordinate then 1 comma 0.375. Okay, so we have gotten all this information. Now on the next page, we're, we're going to condense all this information so that we can actually make a nice, neat little graph out of this situation here. So um, we have to start writing all this all this information down. So we're starting off with our first thing that we did were our zeros. So I'm going to write a Z for zeros here. So our zeros in this problem were uh, 0, 0 and 4, 0. And this one, uh, the 0 had a multiplicity 1, and this one had a multiplicity 2. So we have our 0 of 0, 0 with uh, m equal to 1. And then we have 4, 0 with an m equal to 2. After that, 
we have our vertical asymptote. I'm going to abbreviate it VA for vertical asymptote. And in this case, we had uh, two of them. I already forgot what they were. We had two of them. We had uh, x equals 5. And that had a multiplicity of 2. And then we had x equal to negative 2. And that had a multiplicity of 1. We figured out our HA, our horizontal asymptote, we figured out by doing the end behavior, and that one ended up being y equals 2, and then we found our 1 coordinate, so we're, I'm going to call that a key point, because um, it's going to help us start our graph, and we got 1 comma 0.375. That coordinate can be literally anything at all, so if you plug in a different number, it doesn't matter, it will help you do the rest of the graph anyways. And now we just have to do a sketch. We are going to do our best to get it done nice and neat. Here we go. I'll make sure I got everything written down correctly. Negative 2, 1. Y equals 2 end behavior, 1 comma 0.375. All right, awesome. So uh, here is uh, my graph to start with. So we have our, um, our coordinates we got to start with. So we have 0 comma 0, which is our origin. This is a guaranteed coordinate here. And then we have uh, 4 comma 0, so 1, 2, 3, 4. If you notice, I'm not actually like um, putting any tick marks. I'm just guesstimating about. So we have this guy, 4 comma 0. We also have a vertical asymptote at x equals 5, so 5 is bigger than 4, so we are going to draw a dotted line, just like I had earlier, at x equals 5. We also have um, a uh, vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Um, and now we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Now, the horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, I, I earlier said I put a star on the never crosses. That's because for vertical asymptotes for us up here, it, these graphs will literally never, ever cross the vertical asymptote. So this is a never cross, never, ever. If you want to, that's actually a true statement. The horizontal asymptote, though, this is, this is okay. These can can cross. Whether or not they cross is um, not really easy to figure out and uh, it's not something we're going to explore. Uh, but what we can do is say we're only going to graph these at the edges. So when I say that y equals 2, like y equals 2 is technically the line that goes all the way across you know, up here. But what we're going to do is we're going to start at the far right hand side of what we've put down. So we've currently put down these two lines. We're going to start the y equals 2 there. You know, we should probably label these things. So we just had this guy was x equals 5. This is x equals negative 2. This is y equals 2. So we're just not going to graph it in the middle here. The reason why is for these functions, it will never cross at the edges here, but it is allowed to cross in the middle. Now we have our one coordinate that we had to start with, our 1 comma 0.375. So our 1 comma 0.375, um, so this is 0, that's 4, that's 2, so 0.375 and 1 is going to be about right here. For the rest of the graph, we're going to follow logic. So um, the logic uh, is similar to the previous lesson. So these two coordinates are nice and easy. We're just going to go ahead and play connect the dots. So it probably goes up, you know, here, maybe a little bit more and comes back down over here. And then that previous lesson when we were graphing, what do we do? Well, we look at the multiplicity. The multiplicity of the zero here, um, up here was one. So because it was one, we're going to go ahead and cross through. So it crosses there. And then here, the multiplicity was 2, so it's going to bounce off of that guy. Now, what happens at these asymptotes? The logic is the function has to get as close to these lines as possible. So over here, we are just going to go really, really close to this guy, and it's going to go all the way down. Um, and there's a fancy way of writing this, and I'm going to have that uh, included at a, a later lesson. Um, 
However, if you'd like to write it for now, what we would say is, is um, should I do it as a later lesson? No, I should do it here. I'm already having a long lesson anyways. I'm just going to add it here. I'm sorry. I'm changing my mind halfway through the lesson. Because originally I wasn't going to. Now I am. This guy right here, what we would write for this. And we're going to talk about this, like I said, a lot more in a later lesson when it's more important. We would say as x approaches negative 2 with a little plus sign, that means negative 2 from the right. So maybe I should have like a pink something over here. Um, from the right. It can also be from above if there's something like that. We would say that uh, as x approaches negative 2 from the right, f of x approaches negative infinity because it's going all the way down. Again, you don't have to write that. I'm just putting it down for now. We're going to talk about it more at a later lesson, but if you want to include it, you can. Um, Anyways, over here, same exact thing happens. We bounced off this axis, and we have to get as close to this line as possible. So again, what did we do so far? So we have put all this information. You know, I'm going to zoom out. That's what we need to do. There we go. That's better. So what did we do? We started off by writing out this x equals negative 2 and x equals 5. We figured that out by finding the vertical asymptotes. Um, these never, ever are crossed. So we started our graph at the coordinate that we found, which was literally anywhere, and we started playing connect the dots. And then we use logic to say that it can't ever cross it, so it much must approach it. Can't ever cross it, it must approach it. Now, where do I go from here? We look at the multiplicities. Um, so I'm assuming the left-hand side, there's no real good reason for that. Um, hold on, I need, I need to pause the video really quick. Sorry, I thought I made a mistake. Um, but I didn't. We're okay. Everything's fine. Um, anyways, I'm starting on the left-hand side, and we have to look at this multiplicity. The multiplicity here is 1. Remember that when the multiplicity of this guy went through the line, there's a similar logic, because it went from a positive number to a negative number as it crossed over this guy. So from at negative 2, the same thing's going to happen. It's at a negative number right now. It's on the bottom. It's going down. It's going to negative infinity. That means on the other side of it, it's going to go up. It's going to be approaching positive infinity. And again, that is because the multiplicity of that negative 2. On the other side, the multiplicity of 5 was 2. Because the multiplicity was an even number, that's a bounce. That's like this guy, where it does not change sign. So because it does not change sign, it was going up before. It's going to go up afterwards as well. What do you do after here is logic. It has to approach the asymptote. So we are going to approach that asymptote, approach that asymptote. Boom, we have finally finished this graph. Oftentimes it is a uh, good practice to um, put this into Wolfram Alpha and see if you came uh, somewhat close to it. Uh, in class, we would have uh, actually graphed it on our calculators first to make sure that we had a somewhat accurate graph anyways. Um, but it's good practice just in case you end up not having a calculator. I am not going to waste your guys' time as I type it in. So I'm going to pause the video, type it in, and then show you the screen. All right. So um, anyways, I graphed it up here. I actually went to Desmos instead of Wolfram Alpha because it was better um, for that. It took a little bit of time to type in. You can see it's a little bit nasty looking. But in the end, our graph ended up being pretty dang accurate. So um, there it is. Nice and neat. We did pretty, pretty well. Uh, let's go on uh, to another problem, but right before we do that, I'm going to turn this uh, Firefox capture off here. Uh, transition over there. Uh, one note I wanted to make is note why I did my dotted line the way I did it on the horizontal. If I had graphed it in the middle here, I would have messed up because it looks like I can't cross these asymptotes. We wrote down it never crosses, but it only never crosses at the edges because in the middle here, it actually does cross right there. All right, let's do uh, one more example. Um, by the way, this is the point. Um, we're at the 24 minutes into the video. I was recommended to do 20 to 25 minute videos for the lesson for the week. So if you'd like to take a pause, this is a great time to say, eh, you know what, I'm pausing for today. I'm going to finish it at a later time. Or you can power through, finish the entire thing in one sitting. Um, up to you how you want to approach that. 
Um, but I'm going to do one more example fully uh, for you, and then I recommend doing uh, the last two more of a try it on your own first. And then, um, you know, uh, well, you know, try it on your own first and then compare and contrast with mine, or maybe like try one part, check, try one part, check, try one part, check, that kind of thing um, to see how well you do. All right. So here we go. Uh, number two, we're going to graph uh, this guy right here. We have x minus 2, x minus 4, x minus 3, x plus 5 cubed. Here we go. So step one, I'm not going to write out uh, exactly uh, what we were doing before, but I, I kind of want to show you that you can do these pretty quickly if you don't write out as much stuff and you kind of keep it as condensed as you possibly can. So for instance, I'm going to write here uh, my z for zeros. I'm going to do what I did on the second page previously right away. So we're going to have uh, two zeros here. We're going to have x equals positive 2, comma, 0. And that's because, you know, we're just setting the x minus 2 equal to 0. And that has a multiplicity equal to 1. And then we're going to have 4, comma, 0. And that's going to have a multiplicity equal to, to, to 2. I don't know why I stuttered there, but I did. There's uh, my zeros there. My vertical asymptote. Uh, my vertical asymptote there, we have um, x equals 3, and that has a multiplicity of 1, and then we have x equals negative 5, and that has a multiplicity of 3. Finally, we have our horizontal asymptote. Remember, a horizontal asymptote is found by doing the end behavior. So the end behavior is going to be comparing the degree of the numerator and the denominator. Over here, uh, the total degree is equal to 3, and the degree here is equal to 4. So because the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator, we do not need to um, do anything else because we know that as x approaches plus or minus infinity, um, g of x in this case uh, is approaching zero. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Remember that is the x-axis. We need to figure out any coordinates um, whatsoever. So uh, in this case, uh, I'm going to plug in one again because plugging in one's nice and easy if that's not already uh, part of the factoring up there. So I'm going to say kp for key Point, and I got to plug in a uh, one here. And if I plug in one, if I do g of one, and I use my calculator to do it, I don't think we even do we need a calculator in this one. Yeah, we do. So we're gonna plug in one here. I'm just gonna use a calculator to do it because I am way too lazy to do this by hand. So we got negative one times nine. Why did I do it? Negative one times. Of course, it's negative nine. Jeez. All right. Divided by um, negative two times six to the third power maybe one so I get if I do all this work um, does that make sense plugging in negative positive over negative over oh, yes it does make sense I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself. We're good. I'm just double checking that my answer makes sense. It's always important to do that. If you don't check that your answer makes sense, then um, you're going to end up doing all this extra work. You're going to graph the entire thing. Notice that you made one small mistake and then have to redo the entire thing, and that's painful um, to have to do something like that. This is a really small number, by the way. Uh, that's, that's okay. That happens. Um, but you have this 0.021 um, as our coordinate, which means that we have 1, comma. 0.021 as a coordinate. So we have to, done all that work. We just kind of condensed it uh, into a smaller little section here. You don't have to condense it that much if you don't want to. You want to show more work, you can. Uh, that is totally up to you how much you want to do uh, in that way. So I'm going to do uh, the longer method uh, on problem three and the shorter method on problem four. Those are all the examples we're doing for this week. So let's go ahead and get this graph going here. I know you can't see anything yet, so I'll fix that in seconds. So uh, here we go. Um, so we have uh, 2 comma 0 
so that's going to be about right there maybe there's my two comma zero and my four comma zero about right there then we have x equals three x equals three is right in between that so that's our vertical line going up and down um and then we have x equals negative five which is going to be like way over here Um, then we have this coordinate 1 comma 0.021 which is going to be like here and that's going to be like barely above the axis like maybe right there. We also need to consider this horizontal asymptote y equals 0. That is the x-axis. So we just need to remember that it's going there. Sometimes I've seen students like draw little slashes that go towards it. Some students just like to uh, extend the axis with a dotted line to remind themselves that that's what's happening here towards the end. Um, up to you how you want to, to do that. Yeah, you could also just remember that that's where it's going and therefore uh, it's approaching it so you don't have to draw those dotted lines you don't want to. Uh, up to you how, how you want to do it. Um, but we are always going to start with that key coordinate, that 1, 0.021 that we got. So we're starting there and we know that it has to go towards this dot here and you ask yourself, okay, the left over here, what am I supposed to do over here? Where does it go? Well, it cannot cross this line, and we know where the zeros are. We're across the x-axis, are only here and here. So it doesn't cross this line either. So it's got to go up towards this. If you want to figure out exactly where it crosses here, I could plug in zero to see where it crosses, but um, we're going to just go ahead and guess that it's about right there, and it's got to go up to this. Over here, we're looking at the multiplicity. That was 2 comma 0. Uh, 2 comma 0 had a multiplicity of um, 1. Because at a multiplicity of 1, that's a cross through the axis there. So it crosses through. Where does it have to go? It's got to go down to this guy. Um, I was supposed to label these x equals 3 x equals negative 5, never labeled those. Um, x equals 3, if we look back at it, had a multiplicity of 1. A multiplicity of 1 means it changes sign. Um, it crosses through, so it's going to cross to the other side. So it's going to go all the way up here, and again, it has to connect down to here. Looking at, uh, this was uh, the 0, 4, comma 0. That had a multiplicity of 2, so it bounces off that guy. However, even though it bounces off there, it needs to go back towards this asymptote. It has to go towards the asymptote. Um, so you have to start going back down. A lot of students like to ask, how high up does it go? Does it go up to here? Does it go down to here? Um, I don't have a good answer for you, other than it usually sticks pretty dang close. I bet you uh, once we check this on Desmos that it barely even looks like it goes up. It probably like goes like barely up and then back down. I like to try to make it a little more exaggerated. Um, where that maximum occurs, you uh, actually can't figure that out until you get to calculus, so I wouldn't worry about it. But we're actually not done with the graph. Uh, when I grade these, uh, normally, uh, you know, I've graded these for years and years. Every time I've taught Algebra 2 pre-calculus, and you actually have to revisit this in calculus because it's an important concept in calculus as well. Um, students stop here because they forget there's a left-hand side over here. They have to continue that too. So we drew up to here, but then we just stopped. We got to finish. X equals negative 5. Um, that was a multiplicity of 3. Um, 3 is an odd number, changes sign, so it's going to hop down to here. Where does it have to go? It's got to go towards the asymptote. So go towards that asymptote. Here we go. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, there is our beautiful little graph. I'm pausing the video again because I'm going to type this into Desmos and make sure it is nice and pretty and show so we can compare and contrast our graph. So here's my pause. All right, so here we are back at this uh, this graph here. So I, I mentioned how it, it's going to look like it barely even goes up here at this 4, 0. Um, and I, I kind of want to zoom into this to show you that it does, in fact, go up after 4, 0. But it goes up so low. Where is it? It's hard to even see that it goes up here. You can kind of see that it, it, it rounds to 0. <laughs> Because of how, I wonder how much I have to zoom in for it to not do that. This is obnoxious, guys. Uh, how much, well, does it let me zoom in more? Is this times 10 to the negative 8? It's still telling me zero. Oh my gosh. So, um, to make a long story short, it's such a small number that it's hard to even think about. Is there like a reset button? 
I like a default zoom. There you go. Um, you can see that our graph overall was pretty dang good, though. Um, we have this asymptote there uh, that it's going towards. Um, and this is why, actually, graphing it this way uh, makes it some... Um, I don't know. In my opinion, it uh, graphing it by hand where you don't have uh, that, uh, that that terrible flat line and it doesn't have this like vertical line going in. You can kind of see what the real shape is going on is sometimes better than um, graphing it on a calculator or with a computer because you can really see what's actually happening on these graphs. Um, anyways. Uh, again, if you have not taken a break, you really, really should. It's been 35 minutes in a regular class. You would have had time, you know, you know, move around a little bit to get up a whiteboard, talk to a friend, um, you know, sneakily check your phone when I'm writing up at the board, you know, whatever you would have done in class, you know, go to the bathroom, something like that. You would have done it by now, um, especially if you ever pause the video to have to catch back up with what I was writing. So really, you should take a break by now. It's 35 minutes in. But we need to continue on. Uh, I have another graph. I thought I was going to have two pages here, so I have a blank page. But here is problem number three. So you have had uh, a little bit of practice now. You've done um, two problems on your own. Um, if you did take a break uh, long enough, you need, might need to go back over your notes one more time. But uh, this problem, you really should try to do as much of it on your own as possible. I recommend doing it in two parts. One where you do all the zeros, all the asymptotes, the end behavior, the key point. Figure out all those on your own and then check your work with mine. Then do the graph. See how well your graph went. Then check your work with mine. See how well you did. See if you actually learned it. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. So, uh, yeah, let's check it out right away. So you're supposed to be pausing the video, trying it out on your own. There was your chance. Let's start writing it up. So right away we have, um, we're setting that top equal to zero. So step one, setting the top equal to zero, we got negative four X. I said I was going to do that the longer way. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, X minus three squared equals zero. So that means we have negative four X equals zero. So divide by negative four and you get X equals zero. And that had a multiplicity of one. That's the coordinates uh, 0 comma 0. Over here we have x minus 3 equals 0, so x equals 3, and that's got a multiplicity of 2, so that's the coordinate 3 comma 0. Um, there are zeros right there. And then now uh, step number 2, we have to go ahead and set that denominator equal to 0. So we have uh, 2 times x plus 4 squared times x minus 2 equals 0. This guy, 2 equals 0, like if I did that, it never happens, so I can just uh, ignore this. I don't need to worry about it. It's pointless for right now. It is important for the end behavior, but it's not important for right now. Um, so we got x plus 4 equal to 0. Um, so that means x equals negative 4, and that's got a multiplicity of 2. And then we have x minus 2. Um, equals zero, so x equals two, and that's got a multiplicity of one. Step number three, figuring out these leading term. The leading term of the uh, top part of this problem is gonna be negative four x multiplied by x squared, which is negative four x cubed. The leading term of the denominator is gonna be two multiplied by x squared multiplied by x, which is gonna be 2x cubed. Because those two guys are the same, you need to divide negative 4 over 2. So negative 4 over 2 is negative 2, um, which means that our end behavior, we would say, you know, as x approaches infinity plus or minus uh, h of x approaches negative 2. Um, Step number four, showing all that work, finding any old coordinate whatsoever uh, that's not already part of our problem. Um, I'm going to plug in one again. I like plugging in one. One is nice and easy to deal with. H of one equals negative four times one times one minus three um, squared divided by two times one plus four squared times um, one minus two and uh, doing it by hand. You don't have to do it by hand. You can use a calculator. It doesn't matter really. You got negative four multiplied by um, one minus three is negative two. Negative two squared is four divided by two times one plus four is five. You're squaring that guy. I should have written 25 times uh, negative one. So you're going to be getting negative 16 divided by uh, negative 50. 
So um, that's going to be 0.32. Um, I did that fast because anything divided by 50, you just multiply by 2, you get over 100. Um, anyways, so you have the coordinates uh, 1, 0.32. Put all this information nice and neat onto the next page. So if you were just doing this um, kind of the faster way I recommended doing it, um, you started uh, doing it this way. This is like where you began. So I need to actually look at this myself. So what did I write down? I wrote down 0, 0, 0, 0 multiplicity equal to 1. And then we got 3, 0. Multiplicity equal to 2. Vertical asymptotes. That was our next part of this. And we got x is negative 4 and 2. So you got x equals negative 4 and I had a multiplicity of 2 and x equals 2 and I had a multiplicity of 1. Our horizontal asymptote, that one we figured out was y equals negative 2 and our key point that we wrote down was 1 comma 0.32. Oof. Okay, so um, let's make this graph all the way up. And we need to start labeling it. We got X, we got, I think it was H of X. And what coordinates do we have? We have 0, 0. We got 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0. We have x equals 2 as one of our asymptotes. We have x equals negative 4 as another one of the asymptotes. And then we have y equals negative 2. So, you know, I really should have mentioned this one more time about the, before I had to do on your own. Uh, but the reason why I put this one here is because now this y equals negative 2 is down here, but it starts after the last 0, not after this dotted line. It's going to start right here. Um, technically, there's this little spot right there where it is allowed to cross. y equals negative 2. Okay, I don't know why I put a little arrow in there. No arrow. Okay. Um, anyways, because it's the farthest right, right and left thing that you wrote down. So if you wrote down a dotted line over here, it's going to be you know your asymptote. Uh, but it, it could be at the after the zero. So there's a little spot in between where it could pass. Doesn't guarantee a pass, but it can. And then you have one comma point three two. That's going to be like right here. All right, and we again we just use our logic. So we have to, we know we got to connect there. We know that we can't go down. We got to go towards this asymptote. All right, now what do we do? We got to look uh, everywhere. So I'm just going to go right here, and then I'll do go left afterwards. So looking at x equals two, x equals two had a multiplicity of one. So if you get that multiplicity of one, that means you're going to hop to the other side. And just like I said before, you're allowed to cross that asymptote there. So let's go ahead and do that. And now here's the interesting thing about this. You actually don't even need to look up uh, to figure out that um, that th that this one had a multiplicity that was even because you know it's got to go back to this asymptote anyways. But if we do look up there, x equals 3 did have a multiplicity of 2. So we do know that it's going to bounce back towards this asymptote like this. Let's start going back over here. Over here, 0, 0 that had a multiplicity of 1. So it's going to cross through. After that, where does it go? Well, it has to go towards the asymptote. You can't go up because there's no zero here to cross. It has to go down. So down like that. Um, after this, again, you know it's got to go towards this asymptote. So you kind of know that negative 4 is a multiplicity of 2. But you wrote that down. Multiplicity of 2. So it stays on the same side. And it has to approach the other asymptote. Nice and neat. If you'd like to check this on Desmos, you can. I'm not going to check it towards it because I've been sitting here for almost an hour. Um, it's been 44 minutes of video plus a little bit of time typing stuff in. 
Um, I'm actually going to take a pause for a second to get a drink really quick. Okay, that was fast um, for my little break. You actually was instantaneous for you, but who cares? All right, the last problem. This one I made nice and small. It's going to be the shortest problem there is. I made it this way, um, so it uh, would be really, really easy for you to check to see did you actually understand most of what went on uh, during this lesson or um, do you need some more help? There is a slightly weird thing about it, but really you should be able to try this one on your own because there's not it's not that big. Um, and we're ending on the smaller problem and uh, the homework next week will be to practice this stuff more on, on your own and we'll get there. But we still have to do part two of this lesson before we even have a whole bunch of these practice problems. So... Man, long stuff. Here we go. So, um, starting off, our zeros. Again, you should be trying this on your own first. So pause, maybe try it on your own. It's up to you. Be like This would be a whiteboard practice problem in my class for sure. Uh, here we go. So our zero is right away um, uh, a coordinate 3 comma 0, and that's got a multiplicity of 1. Our uh, vertical asymptote, there's only going to be one. That's going to be at x equals zero, and that's got a multiplicity of two. We have a horizontal asymptote here. The degree of the numerator is one. Degree of the denominator is two. So the denominator is bigger than the numerator. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, guaranteed. Any coordinate whatsoever. Um, I made it so that when you plug in one, you get a nice easy number. Um, k p k of 1 equals 10 times uh, negative 2 over 1 squared, which is just going to be negative 20. So you have the coordinate 1 comma negative 20. And let's go ahead and graph this guy up. Again, you should be pausing, trying it on your own as much as you can. I don't know why I drew that line going all the way over there like this, but here we go. There are the arrows. We got x. We have k of x. We have 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 over here. And then x equals 0 is the y-axis. So, <coughs> oh, man, I literally am still coughing. It's been so long. Um, here we go. x equals 0, uh, the y-axis here. Uh, so this is a dotted line. Again, if you want to like extend this up here to remind yourself that as dotted as you can, or you can just leave it as it is. Um, and then y equals 0, interesting, is also uh, an asymptote. So this is like dotted over here too. So we do have asymptotes. We're just not having to draw them ourselves. They're like already drawn for us with the axes. Starting the problem, 1 comma negative 20. So 1 comma negative 20. Let's put it, I don't know, how about down there? And again, we are just using logic to figure out where stuff has to go. So um, this one over here, it's got to go towards the asymptote. This one that has to connect. That zero right there had a multiplicity that was equal to one. So we're going to cross through. But we have to go back down towards the asymptote. Over here, k of x, uh, this uh, x-axis was an asymptote, but it had a multiplicity of 2. So because I had a multiplicity of 2, it stays on the same side, so it's going to be down here. There's nowhere else to cross, but it does have to go towards the asymptote, so it's going to look like this. And that's it. There's our graph. Hopefully, learn something. Sorry for such a long video. Um, uh, next week we'll have a whole bunch of practice problems for these and the uh, school year is coming up uh, close because next week we're already going to be in May um, have a good one guys enjoy the rest of your day your weekend and I'll see you later